We're so glad you're here. We're at Urban Air having fun. We have the Josiah oh, sign in this morning. Here's my friend AJ. We're just bouncing around with the youth. You can come to these youth events too and have fun and bounce. But welcome to First Church. We love you. Have a good morning. Welcome indeed to virtual worship here at First Church. My name is Katie Gilbert and I serve as our executive pastor and use the pronouns she and her. We have lots of exciting opportunities coming up that we wanna share with you today. The first is that if you have children or youth in your home or who are proximate to you, we hope you are paying special attention to our summer calendars. There are exciting opportunities for both our kids and our youth as we move into the season of summer. Our children will have the opportunity to participate in Gross Out Camp, which is June 10th through 13th in Trustful, an opportunity to get out into God's creation and to learn and enjoy life together in the beautiful outdoors. There will also be the opportunity for Arts Camp, July 15th through 18th here at First Church, where we will be taking a look at the heroes of our faith and the heroes that lie within each and every one of us. Our youth also have a bunch of exciting trips and service opportunities, day trips, and this year we are particularly excited about the opportunity to attend passport camps. Our youth are being invited to join us the week of June 24th through 28th uh, for an adventure to Spartanburg, South Carolina, to join um, our friends at Passport. You can rest assured that this will be an opportunity for each student to customize their camp experience to explore their passions, and to inform their faith journeys. It is sure to be an exciting and beautiful week of building community. If you have questions about our other events during the summer, I invite you to reach out to our Minister to Families, Ashley Hess at ashley at firstchurchbhm.com. Most importantly, we hope you'll join us, even if it's just a volunteer for some of those opportunities. Our next announcement is about the opportunity to purchase tickets for the Flamey Grant concert coming up on Thursday, May 23rd. Now, maybe you're thinking, Katie, do you mean Amy Grant? No, I don't. I am meaning Flamey Grant, who is a well-known singer and songwriter and drag queen uh, out of Nashville, who is coming to perform at the Woodlawn Theater. Um, and in addition to being able to see Flamey Grant, our very own Jacob Perry, who used to sing with us in our loft um, band uh, here at First Church, will be opening. So it's going to be an exciting uh, evening of really good music and um, a celebration of love here in Birmingham. Tickets are $23, and we have a limited quantity available at that price. Uh, this will allow us to be able to go and sit together uh, as the First Church community to enjoy a night of good music. You can find out more information about that as well as purchase your tickets under our Coming Up tab online. Last but not least, we want to make sure that you are marking your calendars for our Memorial Day weekend plans. While we will still have our regular virtual worship at 9 o'clock, our in-person services will be combined and led by and hosted by uh, the loft. So at 11 a.m. on Sunday, May 26, we will have one service at 11 o'clock in the loft. During that service, we will be concluding our series on Faith Like a Child uh, by reading the book together, The Dam. It's a beautiful book, and uh, this will be an opportunity for us to remember together. Uh, you're also invited to come a little early that Sunday and enjoy the beautiful hospitality of our loft coffee team. They'll have coffee and tea and snacks like you can't believe uh, for you to enjoy as you enter worship. Friends, with these announcements shared, I invite you to join me this morning in taking a deep breath and preparing our minds and our hearts to be fully present in these moments of worship ahead. We're glad you're here.
Good morning. At this time, I invite you all into the prayer of confession and to hear our words of assurance. God of grace, we confess that we are not always a people of grace. We do not always remember who and whose we are. We cling to the stories that tell us our worth is from what we have and what we accomplish. We forget the stories of being made in your good image. Love just because we are your delight. We often tell stories of the pain of life more than the joy we have experienced. We forget to share the good news and the awe of wonder that are ours to be enjoyed each day. Forgive us, we pray. Remind us of the good gift of the life we are given. God knows our tendencies. God knows our hurts and needs. God knows our inward longings. All this God knows. And still, God loves God offers compassion to meet our fears and flaws. Hear the good news. You are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord, give us new strength so that we can build places of belonging. To create a community for all to share their gifts, to know that each of us is loved, to help us to see the light of Christ in all that we serve. Let us remember that each of us is loved, each of us is willed, and each of us is necessary. And we pray as you taught us how. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I invite you to hear the words from our scripture reading this morning, which comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 8. Hear these words. We have many parts in one body, but the parts don't all have the same function. In the same way, though there are many of us, we are one body in Christ. And individually, we belong to each other. We have different gifts that are consistent with God's grace that has been given to us. If your gift is prophecy, you should prophesy in proportion to your faith. If your gift is service, devote yourself to service. If your gift is teaching, devote yourself to teaching. If your gift is encouragement, devote yourself to encouraging. The one giving should do it with no strings attached. The leader should lead with passion. The one showing mercy should be cheerful. This morning, as we move into our time of offering, we want to center in on our youth ministry. Today, as we celebrate Senior Sunday and the beautiful young adults who are graduating and launching out into the world, we want to celebrate also the gift of this youth ministry. We celebrate a diverse group of students who are able to come here to First Church and know that they are fully seen and fully loved just as they are. From serving in our community to trips to the beach and to Six Flags, Wednesday night gatherings, Sunday school, and so much more, our youth ministry is a real gift to the next generation of our church. And we certainly could not sustain this important work without your generosity. Your gifts help to support and strengthen our student ministry. Your gifts help prepare and equip our young adults so that they are ready to go out into the world with the foundation of knowing that they were created in love, by love, and for love. You are helping to make our future brighter by enabling us to invest in the lives of our young adults here at First Church. So this morning, I invite you to give generously so that together we might be able to continue to build and strengthen and support our vibrant youth ministry.
Hi, I'm Stephanie York Arnold. I'm the senior pastor here at First Church. My pronouns are she and her. I'm so glad you're joining us for worship today. You know, it seems that there is something about children and being childlike that makes faith more accessible, more whole, more full. In scripture, we find Jesus sharing with his disciples the truth that it is by becoming like children that we most experience the kingdom of heaven. In our new sermon series, Faith Like a Child, we are taking a few weeks to explore some scriptural texts along with some recent children's books that church member and librarian Justin Banger has helped us curate. These books, aligned together with our scripture, offer us powerful life lessons that we hope to teach our children as they grow into adults. And often then, we need reminding of as adults too. Our scripture today comes from the book of Romans. Paul is talking to early Christians who live in Rome about being who they were called and gifted to be. He's instructing them to see their lives as living sacrifices that are offered to God. He means by this, not that they're going to be martyred, but that they, the very act of them living should be understood as a gift that they give back to God. How do they do that? In part by being true to themselves, giving what is theirs to give out of their strengths. He encourages them as people of faith to live lives set apart, led by their love, passion, word, deeds, and faithful ethics, to live a life that honors their Creator. All of Romans 12 is full of good, godly advice, but today we are focused on the part that helps us see that we are each gifted uniquely. We aren't meant to all be the same or to have the same gifts to give. We aren't meant to just fit anywhere. We are meant to find our belonging by being our truest selves. This admonishment from Paul in Romans ties nicely with where Oliver fits by Cale Atkinson. Let's listen and watch this book together. Where Are Oliver Fits by Cale Atkinson. Do you ever wonder where you fit? Could it be here? Or maybe over here? Oliver wondered too. Oliver couldn't wait to see where he fit. He wanted to be part of something exciting. Something wild, something out of this world. On his first try, too much blue, not enough red. It didn't go so well. His second try wasn't much better. Too round, not enough square. And on his third try, well, all he got was a laugh. Being myself is getting me nowhere, Oliver thought. Maybe I have to be more like them and less like me. If they want red, I can be red. It worked. At first, the red pieces were happy to see Oliver. That is, until the red rubbed them the wrong way. Then Oliver thought, okay, forget my color. How about my shape? If they want square, I can be the squarest there is. Too square! Not nearly enough round. Oliver tried lots of things. Too tall. Too short. Too pointy. Too bulky. Not right. All wrong. But no matter what Oliver did or how hard he tried, all he heard was, no, no, no. 
That's it, Oliver shouted. If someone else is what they want, someone else is what they'll get. In a flurry, Oliver cut, taped, and glued until he was nowhere to be seen. I'll be sure to fit this time. Oh, hello there. The other pieces greeted him. Please join us, friend. We love your fancy shape and what fetching colors. Where were you hiding? Where have you been? Oliver joined them. And guess what? He fit. He fit so well that no one had a clue. It was really him. Everything was perfect. Except everything didn't feel perfect. Too blue! In fact, it didn't feel right at all. If I have to hide and pretend I'm someone else, am I really still me? Oliver thought. Not enough purple. Nice carrot. And if I can't be me, then what fun is it to fit in? So he took off his disguise. You! They shouted. Boo! They shouted. Shoo! How dare! Oliver was glad to be himself again, but he was also back to being alone. I don't fit anywhere, he thought. How can I be part of something exciting, wild, or out of this world, if it's just me? But when Oliver looked up, what did he see? He wasn't alone. Others had taped, cut, and glued in search of their fit, too. Oliver discovered that you can't rush or force your fit. All you can do is be yourself. Your fit will find you, and it will feel perfect. Don't forget, no puzzle is complete without every last piece, including you and Oliver, too. This message is pretty obvious, I know, but for being obvious, we sure struggle to learn its lesson. Far too often in life, I think we find ourselves comparing our gifts, who we are, what we look like, and where we fit with others. And we long for God to have given us something other than what we have. We dismiss our giftedness because we think another's gift is better. But over and over in scripture, the truth is told all of us are gifted. All of us are needed. All of us are valued. All of us have a special and needed role to play in this very wide community that wraps the world. Far too often, I hear grown adults saying things to me like, oh, but you have a way with words. I'm only good with my hands. Or all I can do is throw money at it. Or I'm just a teacher. I'm not fill in the blank. Friends, when we do this with our words, we diminish our uniqueness, our God-given talent and place to belong within this community because all of our gifts are needed. We need speakers. We need teachers. We need generous souls with means to give. We need those who serve with their hands and with their hearts. We need it all. I think this is a fitting message for a senior Sunday. Today, in our church services, we celebrate our seniors graduating and their uniqueness in our community. They have had roughly 18 years to grow and develop thus far. We have seen many of their natural talents. They're compassionate, driven, funny, hardworking, and inquisitive. They're athletes, poets, friends, 
helpers, and they have prophetic voices to share. Yet despite all these incredible gifts, do you know what? Our seniors likely won't fit in everywhere they try to belong in the next phase of their journey. They will have to find where their values, their gifts, their uniqueness belongs in the world. Growing up, I tried Girl Scouts, you know, I mean, I loved their cookies, but that's not where I fit. I belonged with 4-H. I tried one meeting of the Montgomery Horse Club. They were all jumpers and dressage riders. Now, though I had taken English lessons, I realized I didn't fit. I belonged riding Western. I tried hanging out with the cool kids in middle school. I got the hot pink ribbed shirt from The Limited, I wore Clinique lipstick, and I had duck head shorts. But I didn't fit. I belonged with my youth group, with kids from all sorts of different segments of our high school. I dated a few really good, kind, interesting guys in my life. But ultimately, they didn't fit. I belonged with Steve. I was Big Al at the University of Alabama, part of the athletic program. I loved the games and the role, but I didn't fit. I belonged with the Alabama forensics team. After college, I moved to Birmingham, got my first job at Vestavia Hills United Methodist Church. Over the seven years I worked there, I made some incredibly dear friends on that staff, but I never really felt that I fit fully with the congregation. I belonged with First Church. As our seniors embark on their next phase of life, they should try all sorts of roles, places, groups, but they must remember when looking for the place they belong, it's the place where their passions, their values, their silliness, their drive, their quirks and story can all be heard and seen. And without a doubt, we all try on things that don't fit. And that's disappointing, and sometimes it even hurts. And at those times, we have to adjust and start again. We remember all the no's, all the not-quite-right feelings, and even the this-is-good-but-not-greats in life. If we stay open and let them, they lead us to just the right place where we truly belong and can be our full selves. It's a lifelong pursuit, and it's worthy of us leaning in and following it through. And this is even true for us as a church family. First Church has a unique role to play in the broader family of God, a giftedness to share with others, a prophetic voice and role to play within our United Methodist Church and here in Birmingham, Alabama. We can't fit into anyone else's spot or role, we must stand apart with courage and be who we're called to be, doing our part to bring about the beloved community of God. And every time we each step into that bright light of who we are and what is ours to offer and do, my friends, we find a community where we can belong. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I invite you to hear the affirmation of faith. In a world that tells us our worth is defined by what we accomplish, we affirm that our worth is God-given. In creation, each of us are named image of God. In baptism, each of us are named beloved by God. In holy communion, each of us are invited to share at God's table. In times of failure, when we believe we are not enough, you say to us, you are my child. In times of arrogance, when we think it all depends upon us, you say to us, I am God and you are not. Therefore, today we affirm our dependence upon God and God's grace, our need for Jesus' love and forgiveness and our reliance upon the Spirit. So that in times of success and in times of failure, we know that we are yours now and always.
friends, as you go throughout your week, may you sense the Spirit leading you, guiding you to where you uniquely fit, where you can give fully of your gifts and your whole heart and self, where your place is in this wideness of God's family. And when you find that, may you sense the deep belonging that you have and the love that is yours to relish. In the name of our Creator, our Savior, and Sustainer, Alleluia. Amen.